in the previous video we saw how to do linear regression using gradient descent. In this video I will show you a simple example of how to do that an actual code. We will actually uh, switch between two codes back and forth it is the same code one of them has more textual uh, text comments and another one is pure code as you would likely see. Um, in case some of you find the fonts of this a little bit difficult to read uh, you can also follow along with the code which has been given in your uh, on the website on NPTEL for uh, week 4. So, you will find these codes on your uh, on the website for NPTEL also. Okay. Um, so, what we will be doing here is trying to set up a simple case. So, I will show you this case here. So, we will try and se set up a simple case for a linear regression. We will create synthetic data. The previous example that I showed you was actual data of temperature versus alpha the, the thermal coefficient, but in this case we will create some fake x and y data. I uh, will also tell you how we are going to create that data just so that we can check uh, you know how to do a linear regression with some simple data. So, if you uh, remember the process that we had started for the codes we first were wanted to set the parameters. So, alpha for example is uh, the learning rate it is a hyper parameter as you might remember. We also wanted to set some stopping criteria and I am going to use epsilon for the stopping criteria and we will look at various different stopping criteria later. Okay. Now, let us come to data generation. Data generation means uh, this is anyway a good idea we kind of generate synthetic data wherever we do not have real life data. In this case we just want something which will take some x and y some randomly distributed points and we try and fit a line to that. So, the way we are going to generate this data is I am going to create a formula by myself I am going to say y is actually 15 x plus 5 and then I am going to add some random noise to it. You know, how this random noise is added what Gaussian noise means etcetera we will come to much later, but this is just some simple method for us to uh, create the data. So, let us now run this section by section and let us run this section also and you will see the form of data that we have. So, on your screens you should be able to see some x y data let me reduce the size so that you can see this a little bit. So, you have some x data here y data here and you can see that roughly it looks like a line will fit it well. Okay. So, let me go back to the code here this is the same code without all the comments that I showed you earlier. So, I am using what is called the debugger and you will see this the same data here okay, x and y data with all these randomly distributed points ideally we should get a line through all this. Okay. So, now we go step by step with our process we initially take some random values of w 1 and w 0. Remember we are trying to model this as w 0 plus w 1 x that is our hypothesis function. So, we will try and model with this uh, this with some random w 0 and w 1. And as we go through this we will create some new variables error here is our actual stopping criterion we would like our stopping criterion to be error is less than epsilon. Now, what are the various possibilities I showed you three possibilities um, there are multiple other possibilities also, but let us say you can look at you know how much is the cost function in this iteration versus how much was it in the previous iteration if it kind of converges that is one form of error. Another form of error is what is the w at this iteration minus the w at previous iteration remember this is a vector. So, instead of absolute value we will actually have to take a norm in order to find out how close the two values are to each other. So, in order to start this loop we give some randomly high value of error in this case I am giving 1 okay. and iter actually contains my iteration number. Okay. So, let us come here okay, we will run our code till this point y h y h is our hypothesis function. Okay. So, our hypothesis function in this case is a simple linear function w naught plus w 1 x. Okay. So, that is what this piece of code says. After you find this out we need to find out the gradient. Okay. So, if you remember from the previous slide since we have two variables with which respect to which we are taking the gradient remember both w 0 is a free parameter and w 1 is a free parameter. So, the gradient of our loss function j 
has two components we had derived this in the previous video. So, del j del w naught is this formulation uh, this formula basically mean of the error y hat minus y and del j del w 1 was y hat minus y the error multiplied by the corresponding input. So, this is what we had that is written here in uh, code form at this point. Okay. So, what we do is we initialize some w 1 and w naught find out the corresponding hypothesis function for all points. So, this is the ground truth shown here and now you are going to have a line which is the line that you are going to fit based on the guessed values of w naught and w 1. So, if you see on your screen w naught the guessed value is 0.16 and w 1 the guessed value is 0.52. This is just some random guess that the machine has thrown at us. Okay. So, let us move a little bit further. So, if we come till here we have now an updated value of w naught. Okay. Now, you have a hugely updated value w naught is 18.25 and w 1 is 11.44. Okay. Now, based on this update you are going to get an updated value of the cost function. So, the previous cost function at 0 was approximately 82 now the cost has decreased to approximately 66 this is what we notice in this. So, now let us plot what our function actually looks like. So, so you see the original data was like this all the dots all the circles and our linear fit is actually somewhere here this is not at all fitting the original data. Okay. So, this is after one iteration this is the situation that we find ourselves in you will see that the old j was 80 point something and the new j is approximately 66. So, it is decreasing, but it is still not good enough there is a lot of difference between the data and our actual point which is shown by the value of j also. Okay. So, j the value of j that we have is high. Okay. So, let us run this once more. So, now you find that the, the fit has now jumped from here to a little bit more we can also check the values of w 0 w 1 that we have got w 0 is now 1 point something and w 1 is 3 point something and that is the guess that you get this we are getting due to the update that we have for w according to our gradient descent formula which is sitting here. Okay. Now, let us continue once more and you see that j is uniformly decreasing now a, a warning this will not necessarily happen in every practical code that you write it just happens to be true for this example that j is sort of continuously decreasing. Okay. So, you see this again the fit has improved a little bit uh, maybe you might not e agree that it has improved, but you can see that the line is here and our ideal line would be somewhere there j is also constantly decreasing. So, now let us observe what happens as you keep on moving. Okay. You will notice here what I am printing out here is actually the j value. Okay. So, the uh, uh, sorry the error value the difference between j at this iteration the difference and the j at the previous iteration. I have asked the code to stop as soon as it reaches below 10 power minus 6. Okay. So, you will see that ab approximately after 72 73 iterations we have got a very good fit. Okay. So, this data fit is actually pretty good and we can now look at our final values of w w naught is 5.04 w is 14.9. Okay. So, these are the values that we have obtained after these many iterations. Okay. So, linear regression has worked you can change your error criteria from the criteria of finding out the difference between two j's to the criteria of finding out what is the difference between my w at this iteration and the previous iteration. And we can run this too. You will see that the number of iterations is slightly different. You will also observe that visually the graph does not change very much as j has already reached very low values, but it depends on how much tolerance you have for what j is. Okay. So, around 150 200 iterations w will stop. Okay. 
So, w naught is some value, w 1 is some other value. Okay, so, you can use any of the stopping criteria you want. Some people actually put instead of putting an error criteria, they will put a maximum number of iterations that is what is computationally feasible. Okay. So, just to show you the same thing in uh, the other place, remember all we have done is w naught is w naught minus alpha del j del w naught, w 1 is w 1 minus alpha del j del w 1 and all these plots. So, you can take a look at both these things. The this particular video showed you a simple example of how to use linear regression to fit some random data. There are some subtleties here. One thing we have not yet discussed is you know this I have just fit a line, but in the previous example I showed you a linear fit, a quadratic fit, a cubic fit. So, can you do a linear quadratic cubic cube quadratic and cubic also using the same procedure? It turns out that you can with a small minor modification which we will see in the next video. Thank you.